All right, hey guys, this training video is gonna be all about the listing wizard. A few kind of, I guess, housekeeping things just to explain what the heck's going on. You've got all of your competitor data kind of here side by side. I think that's pretty intuitive. You've also got a comparison chart up here that also has data related to each of the 10 ASINs that we've imported data on. Now it's going horizontal where everything else is going vertical. so. That can be a little bit confusing, but you've got comparison data for each of the 10 ASINs up here across the top. And then you've got a graphical representation of search volume for uh, the bars you see in color here. So I'll explain each of those in just a second. You can also hover over these and it'll give you an explanation of what they are. Uh, but what the way this thing is organized, you've essentially got in the upper left corner all of your uh, listing and optimization type stuff and then from row 50 and below it's going to be all kind of target keyword list related stuff and then off here to the right top corner that we already talked about that's going to be kind of comparison stuff now what you can do with just the views there's a lot of different options just because uh, th this data to look at is is quite a lot and there's multiple ways you can kind of slice and dice the views up. One way is, is let's say we just want to see the top 10 and top 30 and the total organic rank potential for, let's say, these ASINs here. We can turn these guys off, right? And now we can condense our view down and let's say, you know, ours is this top listing. We've got an alpha ASIN here that's doing really well. And here's kind of the second place guy, let's pretend. So top two competitors, we're gonna hit compare ASIN. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna expand out these ranking sections that we wanna see. And it's gonna hide all the other ASINs and just show us now in the comparison stuff. We've got our ASIN in this section here. We've got competitor one that's doing really well uh, or, or not the keys he's kind of in second place the the one that's doing really well is right here with the 248 uh, but that's kind of gives you an idea how things collapse down and expand you can toggle that however you want there's also some views up here that you can that you can play around with to see what you like the best this freeze mode can be helpful if you turn that on you just uh, choose from the selector if these little icons aren't showing up in your Google Sheets it's likely uh, your your Chrome may need an update or sometimes if you just hit refresh I don't know what it is it's a Google Chrome bug the other thing you can do is open it up in Firefox and it will potentially work but sometimes these icons just disappear for whatever reason and there'll be a little box there and you can always click the box and it'll work it's just kind of annoying but uh, here you see what the freeze and, and unfreeze mode does it basically just locks the column uh, there at AA which is right after our you know listing uh, module or, or pane or whatever the heck you want to call it and then if you scroll down it kind of locks the header row there so uh, that's what that does you can turn it off simply by just going to freeze mode off there's some standard mode cerebro mode this is going to show you the cerebro metrics so right now by default the keyword research section is set to all Cerebro metrics, but if you had Zonguru imported as well, I don't know many users that'll have both, but it could be potentially uh, an option. You can click that and toggle that view on. That's gonna expand uh, some hidden columns here that's actually got the Cerebro data. You can see here it's all blank, but this would show side by side the Cerebro versus the Zonguru data. And it is interesting to kind of compare and contrast what each of them are saying for things like search volume and i like that uh, the zonguru has ppc bid i think that's pretty powerful uh, so there's some advantages of having both of them if you can afford it uh, but i'm going to go back to the cerebro view and just collapse those columns by doing that all right and then just kind of starting from the left to the right here under the keyword section you've got a representation of the quantity of the occurrences that these keywords are showing up in your title search term bullets description and the EBC stuff down here so it's it's essentially what it says it's counting up that golf club travel bag shows up in the title golf club travel bag there it is it also shows up in our bullets the color here it's going to show an order of precedent so title is going to be the top precedent followed by 
your bullets, and then I believe it's search terms description. So may make that variable in the future. You can also click here, and if you want to edit it yourself, I think you can click conditional formatting, and then it'll show up here. You would just move the colors above. So right now, actually, the search term is above the uh, title, which does make sense, so I said that wrong. But you get the idea. That's kind of the order. Top being, if it occurs there, it's gonna show up in that color. So. Uh, the idea is as you type and add keywords, it's going to just kind of check it off the list and color it for you. And then you've got a dynamic search volume here where if we change this value to the Cerebro, you'll see that this search volume column is gonna uh, change based on if it's available from Cere Cerebro or not. All right, so there you saw it change and you noticed all of this data up here changes as well. So. Again, it's interesting to kind of compare and contrast the Amazon search volume from the search query report versus the SAS tools that give you the estimation. So uh, I'm gonna go back to the search query report just because I trust Amazon's info more. All right, and now to kind of explain what's going on with the five different comparison uh, search volume metrics, I'm gonna go ahead and actually there's six of them. I'm gonna go ahead and expand all of them all right, so organic rank is the organic rank position. So that's gonna be just the place that it shows up on the page. So the top 10 search volume and top 30 search volume, you're basically gonna get credit if you have the uh, phrase golf bag travel case up in your listing content and it's within the top 10 in this case and in this one in the top 30. Um, so that we're using this to get the aggregate then for both of these metrics that uh, show up here in the graphical representation. So that's how those are kind of linked together. Title search volume, the next one there is gonna be an exact match uh, phrase in the title. So that's gonna give you credit for that if you have the phrase in your title. And then exact search volume is similar concept except it's not just the title, it's your entire listing. So that'll be a higher value, obviously, than your title search volume. And then permutation means as long as all of these words individually show up in our listing content, that we're, then we're gonna get credit for that. So that gives you kind of an aggregated sum total uh, based on all the keywords in your listing. And one thing I'll mention here that I don't have populated that you could populate if you want, but you'd have to do it manually would be the metadata. So if you want to go in and get the metadata from the uh, EBC, for example, may make just more sense to get it on your listing rather than take quite a bit of time to get it for all of the comparative ASINs, but I guess you could. And you could paste that information into here and it would show you uh, more on the permutation side because you do index for kind of the metadata in your EBC. All right, and now moving on, we've got the keyword metrics. These will be familiar if you ever use the Cerebro reports from Helium 10. So you've got the search volume there, IQ score. We're gonna add some headers here that kind of explain what each one of these is. We haven't done that yet. And then the PPC performance, you've got your search term impression share and rank is the first two columns followed by your search term report uh, kind of summarized PPC metrics for these keywords. Now you gotta remember you've got targeting and then you've got search search terms on your search term report. So there is a toggle if we go back to the settings tab where you can set that. So you can just kind of read what this is here for the search term focus. Targeting is probably gonna be the best by default, but some people wanna see the search term view as well. The metrics will be, will be different, so you just can toggle that. The next time you import your PPC data, it will be uh, reflected in that measurement. You do need to set this before you import the data. It's just kind of a default setting, but if you do wanna see more of the search term related metrics, you can toggle that and they'll total up by the search terms. All right, so let's go back now and scroll all the way to the right. You've got your search query report data. This is super powerful because it's straight from Amazon. So it's got the search volume, your impressions, your clicks, your add to carts, your orders, click through rates, um, conversion rates, and then it's got the entire marketplace orders and uh, entire market impressions as well. 
for your brain analytics, if your ASIN is in the top three, then it's going to have, you know, some uh, some data here. If it's not and it's kind of sucking, then it probably won't. <laughs> But uh, it will have the search frequency rank there, which lower is better on the brand analytics for the search volume. All right, and then we've got some advanced kind of keyword tools off here to the right. I'm going to save that for its own video, and I'm coming to, coming up here counterclockwise. So we'll talk about the rank distribution now. What this means is the first column here uh, that's showing 14 for this value is 14 keywords are in rank position one or more or one to four and that total search volume accounts for uh, 22,600 and again this is a horizontal layout of the i'm actually going to remove this the rank distribution would correspond for this row would correspond to our asin and then this one would be this next asin so so on and so forth but um, you can just get an idea at a glance what area that the heavy hitters like this one, he's ranking for 34 keywords, and that accounts for 64,000 uh, search volume per month. So that's a pretty good area and set of keywords that we definitely want to look at uh, when trying to figure out which keywords we need to go after next. So you can pretty much assume if he's in spots one through four, that's where he's getting most of his sales. And you can actually edit these ranges here from the settings tab. So if I go back, that's what this rank distribution section here in the bottom left for the thresholds means. It means one to four, five to 10. You, can, you get the picture, you just edit the max there and it'll adjust accordingly. All right, and then we're almost done as far as the explanation. The metrics here you're seeing are literally just from the X-ray report from Helium 10 or uh, from the Zon Guru. They've got an extension as well, but it's given you kind of all the relevant listing and performance metrics over time. It's got the weights and prices and so on and so forth. But uh, what's nice about this graphical representation is you can really use it to improve things as you're building out your listing, especially if you're wanting to kind of compare uh, versus this, this main alpha guy here. We can see that he's doing really well for his title, so we'd want to try to get up in that ballpark uh, for the total kind of aggregate uh, search volume that he's indexed for we'd want to kind of try to match that. So you can really just use it as a benchmark and try to push yourself in your copy to uh, get up and exceed the, the best listings that you're comparing against. So, all right, so I'm gonna stop this video right here. This one was just kind of a summary of all the different sections of the Listing Wizard tab. There's a few things I didn't cover, like the custom sections, and these are just, if you wanna add your own formulas, you can click this little plus button and you can use some of the data that's here to calculate things. I'll have a kind of more advanced tips and tricks video towards the end of this series as well, but there's another custom section off here to the far right, and I just added these because a lot of people like to add their own uh, formulas, but uh, anyway, in the next video, we're gonna actually go over a listing optimization example, and I'll show you how to really weed out some of the uh, branded keywords, ones that aren't relevant really quickly, uh, and then we'll start kind of optimizing a listing, uh, and then we'll move into the uh, keyword lists and how to save those, and then we'll end up uh, finishing up talking about some of these advanced ranking and keyword list tools. So I will see you guys on that training video. Cheers.